Hornets defense. Both coaches talked about how important the possession battle would be today. First draw, and a ground ball. Hopkins again in the black today. Penn State in their white with the navy blue trim. Ground ball still available. Ultimately scooped up by the Nittany Lions. And it will get us underway. Tough ground ball by Will Peden. Penn State has two players as well. That was Melendez who just dished it off to Matt Callison. Proved himself as one of the best young players in the country, Callison. Both seems like the two-man game behind the cage as we'll have a man-up situation coming up here. I think that's going to be a slash against Penn State. You can hear it in the stands. And Hopkins will have the first man-up opportunity of the game. Angelus sneaks inside, and it looks like it's going to be more of a push. You heard some contact, but there you see the defender pushing Angelus into the crease from behind. Looks like Alex Ross was the guilty party there. It's the man-up opportunity for Hopkins. Melendez, as you pointed out there, 17 goals on the season. I expect him to be on the doorstep pretty often. Angelus kind of runs that quarterback role. 31 assists on the season. Sixth nationally in that category when it comes to assists per game. Here's Melendez. Hopkins working out of a 2-3-1. Degna whips it wide. Great skip. Skip passes like that really loosen up the defense. And if you can see and skip to the back side, you're going to have a much better chance to score a goal. 22 seconds left on the man-up opportunity. Hopkins trying to strike first chance for Melendez. And they do just that. The skip passes. If you can do this in the man up, you're going to have a lot of success. I love the patience of Melendez. Look at the skip pass from low to high. And Cullison has got our cannon. But I love how he recognized the Penn State defense coming out to meet him. They don't. Melendez being shattered here by Mark Sickler. Melendez once more. Sickler was right on him. Didn't matter. Melendez with the bounce shot. He's already got two goals. It's going to be easier said than done. But I think that's one Frasion is going to wish he had back. Melendez is a right-hand player. And he has a short stick matchup. Take nothing away from this shot. Actually, that placement of the bouncer, look at him place it just outside the crease. Tamboni maybe didn't like that last one. Yeah, and, and, it's, and it's communication between the refs and the officials throughout the game that's so important to having a healthy interaction, a healthy contest between two high-level lacrosse programs. And you got to imagine, Jason, the conversation around the uh, lacrosse landscape here today was, what about the color of my team's gloves? <laughs> Meanwhile, the conversation is about Russell Melendez, who has a hat trick and the first three goals of the evening for this Hopkins team that's off to a hot start on the road. And he scored them all three different ways. One was taking a feed and scoring down low. One was sweeping across the face of the defense, left-handed from about 15 yards. And this one, look at the little head now, has been a difference maker for this Johns Hopkins lacrosse team. Many people thought he should have been the starter last year. He gets the opportunity again in 2023, and he is playing at a very high level. It's his 12th start of the season, and it's been a dandy so far. The beautiful save from Tim Marcel. You have to love the patience of the Penn State offense, moving it around for the best shot. And this is TJ Malone, the sky whammy, big stick fake. And Marcel, look, he bit, but he's athletic enough and quick enough to have shot here in the first quarter if it's not there off of a primary and not give Penn State an opportunity to get on the board. 
Every moment calculated at this stage of the season. Here's Melendez looking for room to fire. And that is number four of the opening quarter for Russell Melendez. I think the timeout paid off. We mentioned Jacob Angelus missing the Loyola game earlier in the season. So did Russell Melendez. And look at the little fake that he throws. Brings it back, and it threw off. Key pieces back from injuries as well, including T.J. Malone, who's been so good. Matt Trainer as well. As there's another save from Marcel. Marcel standing tall. He's seeing the ball well. Struggled two weeks ago against Michigan in really bad weather. Was replaced by Caracciolo. The transfer from Bryant did a really nice job. But then Marcel came good last year. Penn State played hard. Yes, they Every did. single game. Every single game out. Now they get those pieces back. Some transfers. Here's an opportunity that opens up, but another beautiful save for Marcel. Yeah. As Degnan to his left, 40 in black. Pesco right down the alley, shot, and he scores! Confidence is brewing right now for Hopkins. Mark, I don't know if it's the eye black or the game plan. I'm going to go with the latter and just <laughs> making plays. Defensively and now offensively. Pesco, watch this pick set by Ma Matt Collison. This is an excellent pick. And Pesco does a great job of running his defender right off the hip. Last year, it feels like a really, really uphill climb for Penn State. This year has felt different, but Marcel has been so good in this game. They take at him, and finally capitalize. It's Matt Trainer, the younger brother of Jack Trainer, getting Penn State on the score sheet. A much needed goal. Will Peden draws the double, and I like how Trainer just set his feet, let it rip, and delivers a dart. To the then re-emerges and gets it from Winkoff. I like Winkoff. Really do. Very mature. And Trainer once again. His second in as many shots. Matt Trainer answering the call. Watch him get leverage. Soaks up two checks. Keeps his feet moving. Gets to the middle of the field and five holes. Tim Marcel goes across. This is corralled by his brother Jack. Now TJ Malone curls around. Out in front. They score. Looked like Kyle Aldrich. Pandemonium, the crowd is woken up. The Penn State Nittany Lions, three in a row. Look at this silky smooth feed from TJ Malone. That's beautiful. Little flip feed across the field and Aldridge, feet set, target attained, missile delivered, 5-3. Two now, Mark. Well, it, it, lacrosse is such an emotional game in addition to the talent and the physicality and, and Penn State right now they are feeling it and Tim Marcel's rattled make it a 4-0 run now that's Mark Sickler with the latest for the Nittany Lions and the crowd is hyped up in State College Sickler is the Swiss Army knife of this Penn State lacrosse team during his career he's played attack he's been an offensive midi now he's a defensive midi, but he's allowed to stay on when Penn State gets possession because of shots like up the energy. And Hopkins has been counterpunched. Let's see if the Blue Jays can settle down and get another one. Wow. The answer back. Get the lead back up to two. Just a flick of the wrist. Beautiful shot from Russell Melendez. And this is Dylan Bauer, number seven. 
He will be on a pitch count tonight. He's missed the last couple of games. He just cruises up. All-American as well. Jack Posey has one Big Ten Player of the Week award this season. Virginia native, a senior. Coming out in front is Malone. And now Penn State answers right back. Malone, great shake and great burst, especially behind the cage. When you're at a standstill, no one goes from zero to 60 better in the Big Ten Conference than number seven in Happy Valley. He just took Scott Smith, a terrific defender, and a guy who will probably be all conference in his own right, and made him look like a traffic cone. Malone such an excellent finisher on the inside. You see, you can get this ground ball possession again to Penn State. Off the hop here, they come Malone again. T.J. Malone's 22nd of the season. Penn State is starting to turn these face-off wins into pay dirt. We watch Malone's speed and athleticism. Now we're going to see his smarts and his stick skill. Ducks underneath the defense of Scott Smith. Winkoff, T.J. Malone, back to Winkoff, now Jack Trainer. They dish it around, Lane opens up and they take advantage, and Penn State has the lead thanks to Jack Trainer. Marcia was a brick wall in the first quarter and few minutes of this game, and Penn State, give them credit. They have figured out how to shoot on Hopkins' very talented netminder. And we'll see if he can ignite this face-off unit in the second half. And right there, that's a difference being made. He created a 50-50 ground ball, gave Mazzone an opportunity to come in and make a play. And Penn State, they're going to win this face-off. They come up with possession. The back where he coached, but a young man, George Boyardi, Died on Showcall Field in 2004. And Jeff said, going back always brings back memories of George and the tragedy that happened. And it's uh, always a tough trip. And some faces returning after significant injuries a season ago. And it's reflected in their 6 and 3 record. Went 3 and 11 a season ago. They're 4 and 0 on this field. Hopkins wants to change that. They tie the game. Garrett Degnan's team leading 27th of the season. It starts with defense and Tim Marcio making a first save in a long time. And the payoff at the other end is big number 40. Time, room, bull. There with Will Peden. Now here's TJ Malone. Closed off. Oh, shot. Picks the top right corner, and Penn State retakes the lead. You can see the reaction from Tim Marcel, not pleased with his defense, but it's so hard to defend number seven, TJ Malone. Hasn't been able to play last couple years, but he is making up for lost time with a sensational 2023. Look at the spin back to the left hand. The shot, the bullet, upper 90. Here's Angelus, he's been relatively quiet today. Another uncharacteristic place, particularly from him. So the transition is on now for Penn State. Here come the Nittany Lions. A lot to survey and patiently get the, the double donuts and then the turnover there. So now it leads to an opportunity again brewing for Penn State. Down the alley shot, they score! First two-goal lead for Penn State, thanks to Jake Warren. The boys are buzzing at Panzer. Angelus 
just forces it right here. Great stick up if you're Sam Sweeney with the interception. We go the other way. And this is just too easy. Right down the heart of the high. Watching him. Now Angelus operates behind the cage. Gets the switch. Was looking at it in front. It was there. There's Degnott. He's already scored once. Excellent defensive play, though, made by Kevin Parna. Now nine seconds for Penn State if they can scoop up this ground to 22. Jack Trainer. Wink off. Shot clock at 15. Penn State trying to extend this lead. Malone does just that. Before the first shot, Malone had a short stick matchup, and it didn't work out. This time he gets it back and just jukes around the cage. He soaked that first step. Kind of felt that way since the second quarter. Nifty move to split through traffic there from Jack Trainer. Ultimately, though, coughed it up. Let's sure Brendan Grimes didn't work out the way he would have liked to. Tipped uh, off of Penn State, so Hopkins retains possession. Grimes again! Underhand delivery! Trims the Penn State lead to two goals. Big boy goal for Brendan Grimes. Picks the ball up off of the restart and kind of waves Angelus off. He's like, let me go to work. Grimes, a big kid, has played at midfield where he is now, but he had lost to Maryland prior to the win over Ohio State and had a team meeting after that really paid dividends. That shot finds the back of the net, second of the night for Garrett Degnan, and it is a big one to now start a little mini run here for Hopkins. They're back within a goal. Big players show up at big moments, and what Hopkins is doing now is they're getting their attack matched up with short sticks. Degnan, a lefty hammer, goes to his weak hand, if you want to call it. Melendez looking for a lane, puts it out in front. Oh, Pasco just couldn't quite handle it. Good idea, just a little out of reach for Pasco. And had he caught that, his only options were either to backhand it or to catch it and let his momentum carry him of lacrosse at Hopkins. So much history. Angelus peeks over his shoulder, goes behind the cage. The next position out in front. We have a tie game with 4.20 to go. This one will not show up on the stat sheet for Jacob Angelus, but this is a hockey assist for number 23 in black. Look at the attention that he draws. Two guys hits X, then you hit the back side. Brooks English with the finish. Doing a nice job on it. Jacob Angelus, Bobby Van Buren, Ohio State. Ethan Rawl with the long stick at Rutgers. Melendez fires and gives Hopkins the lead back with 2.37 to go. Welcome back, Mr. Melendez. Been quiet since getting his fifth goal. Grimes, again, with a short stick. Dicing him up. Playing behind the goal is Brendan Grimes' strong suit. He had a way to crack this Hopkins defense, which all of a sudden has really buckled down here in the later stages of this fourth quarter. There's a bun shot. We're tied once more. What a game. Wink off this time. The addition in the offseason. These are the moments that he came to Penn State for. Binghamton transfer. Nothing special about this. Just off the restart. 
Penn State is whistle ready, and it's all Zulik was a little flat footed, a little sleepy out there. For this tie game. Good closeout by Posey. Two on the shot clock. Milliman, Peter Milliman was calling for a timeout. The referees did not see nor hear him. He was on the field calling for a timeout. What a change of events. Oh, that shot just went wide from T.J. Malone in the dwindling seconds. You see Peter Milliman calling for, he's on the field, calling for a timeout. And I mean, there's a couple things there. If he gets the timeout, Hopkins, very short time on the shot clock. Do they sub in their defense and just throw yeah, them? this season. And they're trying to get to two and one in Big Ten play. Big face off here, ground ball, 50-50. Who can find it? Hawley. Guy has sonar when it comes to ground balls off the face off wing. So now here comes Hopkins offensively. It's resets. Angelus. Dishes to that X position. Now out in front, and a good defensive play once again from Penn State. Looked like Alex Ross in there. Frassion with a great save. That was a good take by McDermott. Frassion got low, fought it off. Penn State wins the ground ball. Will they play through or take a timeout? Melendez, who got the party started today. What a game it's been. Pesco looking to work down the alley. Now Degnan fires! And that's held on to into the stick of Frasione. Excellent save in a key role. First multiple overtime game for Hopkins since 2018 when they beat Maryland in triple overtime. The faceoff, Naruski continues to be a pesk. That was a key adjustment from Peter Milliman of Johns Hopkins at the half. Wow. Tough call at the box. It'll be Penn State possession here. Saw their sideline erupt. That's it. Great defense by Chase Mullins. Naruski kicks it to the corner. Could have been a push there on Penn State. And I think they called procedure as Naruski was laying on the ball. And the Penn State player couldn't dig it out. Wow, it's... You could have had a push there on the Nittany Lions. The procedure call. 115 to go in OT number two. And back of the goal. TJ Malone once more on the interchange. Malone searching for options. Fell out in front. Out of the reach of Matt Trader. And Omar Seal selling out. What a great job. Oh, no. Opportunity for Penn State. Wins it. Kevin Winkler. Gets rid of the thorn that has been in the side of Penn State, also known as Johns Hopkins. And Penn State wins it in OT. This will be a tough one to swallow for Johns Hopkins. Kevin Winkoff. Jeff Tambroni told us this week that the transition to Penn State hasn't been the easiest, but he kept with it. The coaches kept faith in him, and he gets the game winner. And look at Jack Frassion receiving congratulations from his teammates, 16 saves. Zolik didn't look. Malone intercepts it and Winkoff steps down. Marcio hadn't faced a shot in about 15 minutes real time and he can't catch up to the heat and velocity of Winkoff. What a game. Took two overtime sessions to decide.